January 17th, 1982. This is Joe Todd, interview with Sarah E. Nelson. This is 83 instead of 85. I'm sorry, 83. I probably said 82. Okay, Mrs. Nelson, when were you born? Uh, January the 9th, 1913. Where were you born? St. John, Missouri. Who was your father? Jesse Palmer. He's named after Jesse James. Hmm. That's the truth. My grandfather ran around with the James boys. He did. And his father was sheriff in Missouri, and he used to help Jesse James across the river from his granddad, from his dad. What did your father do? Oh, he was a butcher by trade. Was he from Missouri? Yes, sir. Who was your mother? Lily May Parch Palmer. Her maiden name was Parch. And you say your grandfather rode with Jesse James? What was his name? George Palmer. George Palmer. <clears throat> did he talk about Jesse James? No, oh, all the time. What did he say about him? Oh, he said he was a good boy. Of course, they were teenagers, young people, you know, run around together. And, now, he never done any of the, you know, robbing or anything, but just when they lived in St. Joe, and just, just like kids would be helping get them out of scrapes, and I'm sure he got in a few of those scrapes, too. Mm -hmm. Where did he say Jesse was like? Um, Physically. Just what? a typical, just a physical. Uh, he wasn't a very big man. Mm -hmm. You'd think he was, but he wasn't. He was, you know, a lot of people, they get him as pictured as a big man, but, but he, he really wasn't. Mm -hmm. Remember the James, the James boys, Frank and Jesse. And uh, then my mother used to have to go to school past Jesse James's house, and she said she'd go two blocks out of the way to have to keep from going past that school, because she's afraid, mm -hmm. even after he was killed. Mm -hmm. And then I've been in the house, the original house, myself. Hmm. But, but he, you know, he just said he was a, this is like I say, a typical, typical boy. Hmm. Getting out of escapes and little things. Mm -hmm. How long did you live in Missouri? How long did I live in Missouri? Mm -hmm. Well, I was born there. Mm -hmm. Then my folks moved to Oklahoma City when I was two years old, which would be 1915. How come they came to Oklahoma? Um, I imagine for work, because my father was a packing house worker. He was a butcher. And he went to work at the old Morris Packing Company. It used to be Morris's and Armour's and Wilson's. What did he do at the packing house? He was a butcher. He was a butcher. Uh-huh. Hmm. Where was the Morris? Like well, it was right over where, it's at, where the stockyards is at now, if you know anything about the stockyards yeah. area. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then I started to school at the Columbus School. It was the first school I went to. Started kindergarten. And we lived here till about uh, 1920. And then from then on, I'm, I lived everywhere. I never went to the same school two years in a row. Hmm. My father got transferred that time he was working for. Well, have you ever heard of L.B. Price? Mercantile sells rugs, blankets, curtains. They used to, household goods. Mm -hmm. He'd get transferred to open stores, new managers. Mm -hmm. And I was raised to the north. And then we came back in 1923 from on a vacation. Brought my grandmother down to visit some aunts down in western Oklahoma. And then we moved back in 23, right after the flood was, when the dam broke. The dam, which dam was that? The old Hulsa, Lake Old Hulsa, the dam broke in 1923. And we was down here the summer it broke, back right after it broke. And seen the things from that. How much damage was it when that? Oh, see, it covered all, all the stockyard city and old Bethany and Clara, they was damaged everywhere. 
and then we moved back in 1932, and the Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge, if you know anything about out that way, they didn't have a bridge out that way until about 1935. That's where it was washed out, and no community camp used to be that there. You ever go in that community camp? Oh yes, thousands of times. What's, what was that like? Uh, it was just a squatter place for people that during the depression area, and they lived their little shacks and tents. And it was down the river bottom. Uh huh. Yeah, it was on the on the east side. Now see, they've recoursed that river now to what it used to be. Well, they, and along that river bank, I've made plenty of playhouses down there in those bushes. When I was what were those houses like? The people lived they in? Were just, they were just some of them just cardboard, and some just scraps of lumber. Even, even, um, well, I used to get oranges and apples and things in crates, and they, they'd make a big deal out of them, just anything they could get. Hmm. Where did the people come from? All over. Now, was... where, I, where I got with them, as I got older, was through Exchange Avenue Baptist Church and working with Sunday School. Of course, I lived in that area. I've always lived in that area. Yeah. In Oklahoma City. I remember when the old exchange by dock used to be wooden. Hmm. How many people lived in that camp, the community camp? Oh, I'd say at least a thousand. How'd they survive? What kind of food did they eat or what? Just whatever they could get. A lot of it was, of course, that's where they even had welfare. Mm-hmm. And then years later, uh, better times, some of them worked at the packing houses and just got other work, but they still lived there because I think they paid a dollar and a half month brown rent. Yeah. They had the big soup lines? And... Yeah. Where were the big soup lines in Oklahoma City? Uh, over in Oklahoma City. And then at one point, now I didn't live here when the soup lines was, but um, they used to have them out around the stockyards area. Different, well, Cattleman's Restaurant for one. Well, who provided the food for the soup? Um, I guess the different merchants and, you know, mm -hmm. everything like that. And I was here when the armistice, World War I, and I know the groceryman called my mother and said, told her what had happened and said that she went in the groceries because he was closing and he'd been the groceries what she needed because he said, I'm going to be closed the rest of the week. And there was a lot of celebrating going on. I remember that. Yeah. Tell me about celebrations for all Well, the people were just happy and, and um, they was just sort of like World War II when it was over with. People was happy and they were sad and just having parties and You ever go inside the Morris packing house? No, I never have, because you see, it was there, and I've been in been Armour's, Gold Armour's plant, and Wilson's. And my husband worked at Armour's. He did? And I've been through, yeah. you know, both plants. Mm -hmm. Of course, Armour's has been torn down now for years. Oh, yeah. It's just Wilson. I'll tell you another thing. My father was president of Trades and Labor Council in 1935 in Oklahoma City. He was, at that time, uh, organizer for... And Bell, that house workers. Mm -hmm. That's the way a lot of people remember him. Hmm. What was your husband's name? Herschel Nelson. Where did he do? He worked, well, a little bit of everything. He worked at Armors, just in the beef cooler. What was the inside of the old Armour plant like? Oh, it's kind of hard to describe. They have your killing floors where they killed the cattle, you got to see that. And then you would see them um, down through the, the coolers where they put the meat to cool after it was, you know, mm -hmm. cut up and everything. And then in the uh, sliced bacon, the bacon come down on the racks and the girls pack it. How'd they kill the cattle? Knocked them in the head with a big old hammer. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. 
My, that's another thing. My granddad was head cattle knocker in, in armor packing company in Kansas City in 1903. And they had a great big old, I don't know what kind of hammer it was. Wouldn't look like a wooden hammer, but they, they knocked them in the head. And hogs, they stuck them in the throat. The knife. Mm -hmm. Wasn't very gruesome. It was a gruesome thing to see. In that community camp, what kind of games did you play down there? I really don't know. They just ordinary. You know, like children would play. I didn't live there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they just sort mm -hmm. of like they. Yeah. Where do you live? Where did I live? Oh, all over. Anywhere from the river to 25th Street. Mm -hmm. So I was between Exchange and Agnew. Yeah. I lived just different areas all through there. How big was the Morris plant where your father worked? How many people worked there? Gosh, I wouldn't have any idea. There's probably a bunch because this was way back. See, 1916, 17. Mm -hmm. So I just really wouldn't have any idea. And they had all three plants here? Uh huh, at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Armour and Morris was kind of connected together, but there was a three. Yeah, and of course, Wilson's the only one left now. Uh huh, right? Wilson's the only one left. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's several other smaller, yeah. you know, packing plants there. And my husband worked half the steel and iron, and he worked for the city, and just a little bit of everything where because we was married, you know, if he'd lived, we'd, we was married on the 4th of March, the first time President Roosevelt was born into office. 33? Mm -hmm. What is your your first memory of Oklahoma City? My first memory of yeah. Oklahoma City? Uh, it's about the time that I started the kindergarten. And I just don't remember exactly but it was along with the railroad track on Southwest 19th, right off, it would probably be in West Pennsylvania Avenue. And um, the only little playmate that I could remember having was a little Mexican boy. That's a Mexican family. Well, I, I didn't know any different. And we played, and I know I won't forget this because it's always stuck in my mind that he came up one morning, and he had he had a tortilla, but I didn't know what it was. And um, he wanted to know if I wanted one. And I slapped it out of his hand and said, no, I didn't want that pancake. And he picked it up and brushed the sand off of it, and he went home crying. And I got one of the worst weapons I ever got in my life from my mother, and she said, don't shoot ever. Let me hear you say to anybody else again that you do not walk and do what you did. And then I remembered that morning going to school and we had to go through a little path cornfield to the school. And um, so I remember my mother, that time I didn't know why she was crying because going to school because I was an only child. And uh, so we met some other kids. And they said, Miss Palmer said, we'll take Sarah on to school if you'd like for us to. And she said, oh, she'd be glad for them too. So she turned around and went back home. So she didn't have to take me to school. That's, that stands out. I can remember that. Mm -hmm. Where was that? It's on uh, where it is now on Southwest Pen uh, 20, on, Pen on Pennsylvania on uh, between 23rd and 24th. Southwest, mm -hmm. same place it still is. Yeah. Hmm. And then, then, then I went to first grade to the school that's, it's a vocational school or handicap right now on Reno Street. Mm -hmm. uh, what was right, the name of it? Right, I, I don't remember. It's right east of the railroad across the overpass. In fact, right there by the railroad track is where our house was, right underneath the overpass, I-40. 3540, 35, I guess it is. Anyway, but yeah. And that's where I went, and that's where we had a bunch of gypsies camped at that one time. 
what he described with the gypsies. Yeah. You go out there where they camp? Uh-huh. They camped right across the street from us. What were they like? Huh? What were the gypsies like? Gypsies like? like? Well, I've experienced a whole lot of them from a lie. But uh, they were just, well, more or less like hippies to me. You know, like just traveling. They had scarves on their heads and full skirts and traveled in wagons and had a lot of pretty blouses and skirts. I think that's what the attraction would be, was their pretty skirts and mm -hmm. dresses, but scared to death of them because there was no gypsy going to kidney up you. <laughs> what they do? Huh? What did the gypsies do? That what they do? Yeah. Uh, I don't think they done much of anything, just a steal from the merchants. Mm -hmm. But they always seem to, you know, I don't know whether they would steal it and then sell the stuff or what, but I remember they camped across hmm. from us. In the 20s, I'm trying to think. Were there many flappers around where you lived? Yeah, but I'm not in Oklahoma. Not where I, I didn't grow up. I lived up through the north. They and oh yes, I was very much of a flapper. Hmm. What is a flapper? What is a flapper? Yeah. Oh, it's just a young lady that maybe had her hair curled. I used to wear my hair in curls all over the head, and I wasn't very big. I've always been short, and I was skinny. And you wore little pleated skirts and real short skirts. And How come they call flappers? I really don't know. I think it's just something that come up mm -hmm. for that area. You did the Charleston? Okay. Oh, yes, I can still do the Charleston. In fact, you're going to be around sometime in, on Monday night. And... and uh, we play, we have a rhythm band up here, and I play a kazoo in it. And then when we go out and play, and once in a while we do that, I get up and do a little boogie. Do the Charleston? I still go a little boogie. <laughs> Believe it or not. In the 30s, how bad did the Depression affect you and your family? Uh, my father lost his business when, in 1929. What business was that? He was in the mercantile business. Yeah. And we lived in Michigan. And we moved back to Missouri. And then um, we came to Oklahoma City in 32. Back to Oklahoma City in 1931 or 32. I don't remember the switch. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I, uh, it really affected food-wise and work-wise and Everything. After your father lost the business, you came back to Missouri. We came back to Missouri. Uh -huh. You drive or go by train? We drove. We drove. Uh huh. We drove. What kind back. of work you, did you do then, your well, father? Uh, he's still in the sales work and so just he, whatever kind of work he could get to do. Yeah. And then when we came down, we had my grandfather had a well, we didn't know we had a farm at Clinton, Missouri. We didn't know what it was. And then when we got there, it wasn't anything. Just a house to live in. The ground, he hadn't been able to work it. And it just wasn't workable. So we lived there that summer. And then my father said, Well, we're just coming back to Oklahoma. Now, when was the Lindbergh baby kidnapped? Was that in 31 or 32? Along in there somewhere. Well, that's, that's was, that was, we lived there in Clinton, Missouri then. And then we started out in a Model A Ford. And we come from Clinton to Springfield. We stayed two weeks in the park in Springfield. My dad just go in this town and work. Just get what any kind of work he could do. Just get enough money for gas and a little food. And then we come to Sepulpa. And then I never will forget, we stopped from Sepulpa coming to Oklahoma City and we stopped someplace up here on old 66 highway and spent the night and we could see the oil things burning and we were scared to death. We didn't know what it was. We didn't know what was going to be a fire or anything. And then we came on to Oklahoma City and, and my father then went to work 
he went to work at Wilson's. Mm -hmm. That was in 1932, yeah. when I married in 33. Now, in the early 30s, what kind of meals did you have on the average day in the Depression before you were married? Uh, oh, we always had potatoes, it seemed like. And um, just what kind of meat? You know, if you could ever, maybe once a week we'd manage to have some. And um, I just was not much of an eater. I know we always would have some beans, because I learned to eat beans. And when we was in Springfield, Missouri, some lady had given my father some okra, and we didn't know what it was. And um, so we just threw it away. We wouldn't ask some of the other campers how you cooked it, because we didn't know. But boy, after we got to Oklahoma City, we learned, we, you know, pinto beans and okra and fried potatoes was strictly meal. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. Once in a while, you maybe get some fresh vegetables and everything. Well, pretty hard times then, I Oh, guess. yes. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Even after we was married, well, we was, my husband and I, we was married, and he got laid off from Armors because the banks closed and they shut down everything. We had script money. To spend mm -hmm. when the banks closed, and then and mm. I know I think he made about eleven dollars a week, and we made we paid four dollars a week rent, so we ate pretty slim. You ever consider going to California? No, we didn't go to California. You ever consider it? Uh, just doing the war, and my husband's family all went out there during World War II. Mm -hmm. And they kept wanting us to come out. And I said, I don't know why, but that that time was just my mother and my husband and I. Because my father had passed away. And um, I'd say, that's too far from home. And I don't know what I was thinking about, because I guess I was thinking Oklahoma was home and California was too far. So therefore, we never went. Yeah. What did you do during the war? What did I do? Yeah. Uh, well, for about two months, I worked at the old Will Rogers Field in a civilian cafeteria. But I was married to one of these men that didn't think women should work. Yeah. What did your husband do? He worked at Douglas at that time, Douglas Aircraft. He put Capital C, worked for Capital Steel and Iron. And then he went to Douglas. What did he do for Douglas? Gosh. He was, a, I think, a spot welder. Because that's what he learned at uh, Capital Steel and Iron, mm -hmm. spot welder. And he, they built airplanes out there? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is that a tinker? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's no. all connected with tinker now. Yeah. Uh, tinker was there, and then Douglas was mm -hmm. on east. It's all, I think it's about all one building now. Yeah. What was VJ Day in Oklahoma City like? Oh, it was uh, hilarious. It was happy, and... You couldn't even stir people with a stick downtown, Main Street, any place else. It was just really a happy, happy, mm -hmm. happy time. Were you down there? Yes, sir. It was right down the midst of it. Used to be the old cat store. It used to be at the corner of Main and Robinson. And that was a congregating place for everybody mm -hmm. and it was just Damn and my little oh, daughter sorry. we never had any children of our own but we had the porch good fortune of raising two which were brother and sister mm -hmm. they had the same parents and um, she was just oh she's not quite Two, just a little past two years old. And we went down there with her. Rode the streetcar. Streetcar was still running then. Mm -hmm. From over in the city. So the whole family went down for VJ. Uh, everybody, everybody went down. 
And I had a niece that met, met a sailor from Norman, mm -hmm. and he was from South Carolina. And uh, we just all, everybody was down there. They was parades, and they was just any kind of celebration, like New Year's Eve, really. Just like a real happy New York, New Year's mm -hmm. Eve. It was just really a happy, happy time. Um, before World War II, someone told me that there was a little store run by a Japanese couple downtown. And it seemed like the city had to go downstairs to it. It was a little store and they sold all sorts of stuff from Japan. But they said like the next day after Pearl Harbor Bay it just disappeared. Yeah, that's where a lot of them disappeared. I, I remember, I don't know about that little store. But I know the public market, they was two Japanese families that had the vegetable stands down there, mm -hmm. and they disappeared, and they had some of the most beautiful vegetables. We couldn't wait to get down there. We didn't get down very often to get stuff. But they were, they was just as not, and they had a place out west of the city. But they was a lot of Japanese people, and Chinese also. Because when they tore down where the tunnel is now downtown, see that was all underground Chinese. Mm -hmm. They was people, and you used to walk up and down Broadway, and they you you didn't stay much on Broadway because we were scared of the Chinese. Yeah. What happened to the Japanese? Anyone know? No, never did know. Whatever happened to them? Mm -hmm. They just they just uh, you know, and everybody was really sad to see. Not everybody, but. A lot of people were sad because they did have good produce and it was so pretty and neat and clean. But they just, they just, you know, just one of those. Yeah. Hmm. I think, um, if I remember right, some of them, here something, I don't remember, someplace in Oklahoma they had some concentration camps that they put some of them in. And we always thought maybe that's where they got and they may have got sent back to San Francisco went, you know, we just never did know whatever happened to them. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that public market was used to really be it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. For all of you have ever been there now, oh, yeah. but they had the, all the stalls where they got these antique things and things now we we'll see just all vegetable and produce. We're just fabulous. Can you tell me more about your childhood? Well, as I say, I was raised all up through the North. What do you mean? What do you want to get about my childhood? What? Oh, what kind of games you played? What kind of mischief you got into? Well, we played hopscotch, played jacks, and played volleyball. I was a roller skater. I love to roller skate, so I used to do a lot of roller skate. But we played, you know, jump rope and hide and seek and some games kids never even think about today. Mm -hmm. But uh, what was your favorite subject in school? Spelling, spelling and reading. How far did you go in school? Uh, first year high school. Mm-hmm. What year was that? Ooh. Hmm. That's all I don't remember. I started in Rockford, Illinois. And then we moved back to Missouri. Then we moved again. That's when I quit school. I quit school and I was about 13, from 70. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother, she, she always liked to work. So my father said, you don't go to school. He said, you stay home and you learn to work and keep house while your mother works. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done. That's what I've done. I've been putting her the rest of the yeah. time. Well, I've worked too for the last... I've been with it for be 25 years in April, mm -hmm. and I've worked there since then. Let me try. Till this last 